morning, everybody. It's Friday, December 4th. I'm Charlie Fink, and it's This Week in XR uh, with my friend and partner in crime, Ted Shilowitz, uh, Paramount Pictures futurist. Ted is joining me today from, uh, are you in Big Bear? Where are you, Ted? I'm up in Lake Tahoe. This is our, uh, our continuing find remote places to escape. Uh, part of the Lake Tahoe situation this year is that you can only ski if you have a season pass so far. Uh, and obviously they maintain full social distancing uh, on the mountain. One person on the lift each at a time. Sorry, there's a big truck driving by. Um, so I thought uh, as part of our continuing series of me doing this in, in exotic kind of places to try and basically be less in LA, yeah. we'll continue it uh, this week in Tahoe while I'm up here this week. There's, there's so, lots of know. new restrictions in LA too. Yeah, I, I'm actually, we're, we're supposed to go back, but I'm almost tempted to just stay because <laughs> there's a lot less people up here. I, I uh, know they, uh, they make it sound really scary to go out of the house. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's early, early morning here, so there's really nobody out, so I don't have my mask on. But uh, you have to wear a mask on the slope and, uh, you know, and, and it's very, very strict and everybody on the slope is really very um, cognizant of it. So, you know, because nobody wants the mountain to close. So it's all good. Yeah, it's, it's a nice uh, brisk morning to do our podcast. Talk about interesting ab things. Absolutely. Going on. Well, needless to say, high class problems for those of us who are knowledge workers and can work from anywhere. Exactly. And many young people are, are working from Costa Rica and, um, you know, interesting, you know, tropical locales throughout the world. Yeah. Uh, in, in fact, I was just talking to Lucas uh, Risotto, who, who made that wonderful VR experience, Where Thoughts Go, and he's yep. in the Dominican Republic in a house with a bunch of other VR creators. Right. And they got themselves set up with some good bandwidth, and, and they've made a little quarantine bubble together. Yeah. Uh, so, so that looks pretty good, uh, unlike people who are you know, on the other end of the economic spectrum, who don't get to make those choices and who have to go and work in, in high risk indoor places every day, so. Well, you know, what's, what's interesting that you mentioned that because yesterday when I was up on the mountain, I checked and lo and behold, at part of the mountain, I had 5G, so I did a quick speed test, 110 megabytes, you know, on the ski mountain, I could have totally done any kind of work I needed, including yeah. probably uh, popped on my quest <laughs> if I needed to, which how is you, kind of fascinating, right? How are you liking your 5G phone? Um, it's great. I mean, you know, it's an iPhone, so it's, it, it sort of does what an iPhone does. And, but it's, it's interesting to test the 5G. I, I don't think I've really found massive use for it, but it's just kind of a fun novelty to, to know that you've got uh, in these little areas that have service. Well, I mean, with kind that of kind of bandwidth. speed, you could, you could easily run your quest off of the bandwidth from your phone. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you could do it from, from anywhere. In fact, um, the, the lodge that we're staying at didn't have great Wi-Fi. So that's part of why I went outside to do this is the LTE, and I'm probably on 5G now, I didn't check, but it's either LTE or 5G. You can tell me how good the signal looks. Was actually better than the Wi-Fi in the lodge. Yeah, it, the signal's pretty good. And for those of you who are just listening to audio, uh, Ted has got some beautiful fir trees in the background. It <laughs> looks like a nice day. It's super nice here in LA. I know it's raining on the East Coast and getting kind of cold and wintry there. Uh, so a lot to talk about. We've been off for two weeks. Yeah. Uh, for thanks for our tiny little family Thanksgiving. Um, you know, because we, Jane usually cooks for, you know, 20 people. So, you know, we had a tiny little turkey. <laughs> My daughter came over, um, but we've collected a lot of news stories. In fact, Brandon and I had to sift through them. Otherwise, the, um, the roundup was going to have 50 entries into it. Uh, the mm -hmm. one that caught my eye this week was the revelation that Travis Scott had made $20 million yeah. in a 12-minute appearance in Fortnite. Yeah. The economics of this stuff are really kind of stunning and odd to people that live in the old economy, right? And the closest sort of reference point I can bring to this is, is the Bitcoin economy. I was actually watching a doc last night that uh, New York Times produces these docs on various subject matters. And it was about this young kid hacker who figured out how, he was, you know, he was definitely a sociopath. I mean, this kid is not a good, good, good egg. Right. But he was so smart and used technology to his advantage that he amassed this huge amount of Bitcoins and was literally, literally hacking and stealing people's Bitcoin accounts. And 
literally swapping around millions of dollars. Wow. So there's, you know, and he's a teenager. So they're so showing he, like him and his little posse, like pouring Dom Perignon on top of these Rolex watches that they all bought just to make fun. So it's like, you know, the stuff we used to do as kids to make fun of things and show our rebellious spirit. <laughs> these kids are doing it with technology as their backbone to the tune of millions of dollars. Um, both for the good, like Travis Scott, who's, you know, a legitimate artist and good on him to, to find a way to make that kind of money. Well, uh, actually, he's not the only one. And that's what I was going to bring up. You know, Supersphere produces concerts, you know, yep. uh, for, uh, uh, for Facebook, uh, you know, for their um, uh, auditorium product. I forget what that's called. Um, um, and for venues. Yeah. Yeah, for venues. And yeah. they had Steve Aoki, who is a very well-known DJ. Sure. DJ yep. came on. And, and Supersphere is also uh, a talent agency or a talent broker. And... Um, the producer told me he got paid what he would have gotten paid for a live concert. Right. Yeah. But so, I mean, face, Facebook is not in a, a great position to negotiate with the Steve Aoki's of the world. So yeah. they have to pay what Steve Aoki gets paid. Um, yeah. No, no one's doing Facebook any favors. Um, if our, but, if our listeners, if our listeners are looking for a really good book to read about the power of scale, um, there's a book called future crimes by an author named Mark Goodman. I love uh, that book. And it's fascinating, you know, because he refers to, essentially he's using crime as the metaphor for showing what technology can do to essentially blossom something. And, you know, it makes that metaphor that like, before there was the train, when you could put a bunch of people on a train and one robber could rob the entire train, robbers didn't do that well. They had to rob one person at a time. <laughs> the minute you had a train and a robber could you know, ride up on his horse and rob the entire train, <laughs> stop the train, he had scale. And right. then he makes the reference point that the internet is the world's train robbery, yeah. you know? So it just, it's just really interesting. It's a yeah. great book to read. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. We should put it in the comments. Uh, uh, at least comments on YouTube. Section. So here's another interesting thing, right? You know, I've been running around saying there ought to be sort of a vive port for enterprise. And we both know a guy named Kyle Jackson who started a company that's well-funded called Tailspin. Yep. And their, their first few products, right? And again, you have scale. So you make it once and lots of companies can use it was sort of a soft skills thing for um, human resources executives. Right. So, uh, you know, I always thought that they should be doing things like, welding <laughs> and lo and behold there's a company called transfer vr that just scored 12 million dollars to do just that yeah. so I wonder, you know, they're they're doing the automotive you know and and the you know mechanics and civil engineering part of uh vr training right i wonder if that company jig space is still around do you remember jig space that um it was i think they are thing. Right. And they basically would take objects and disassemble them and reassemble them. Um, it'd be interesting to sort of check in on them and see how they've been. Because they, they got started early. I wonder if they got started a little too early before the, this sort of need yeah. kind of caught up. But I saw it as like, you know, when I need to do something just like the rest of the world that I don't know how to do, often your first stop is go to YouTube, find right. a YouTube video, you'll learn how to do it. This right. was like the, the AR version of that. And I thought it was fascinating. So no, that's an interesting one to look at. Yeah, and then then um, there was a story about a company called Serial that that mm. raised, raised over seven million dollars in Series A to further develop their light field display. And as you and I know, there's a company called Leia, which is uh, founded by some former HP engineers, yep. uh, which is working with Continental in Europe uh, to bring light field to the dashboards of luxury cars. And right. That's starting next year. Yeah, and I think Leia also already has some sort of 3D kind of multi-view um, screens for Honda, I think they did uh, a couple years back. So Leia's been around for a while. It's been used on a couple of experimental cell phones and things. It hasn't really, again, caught on at scale, but the idea of you keep trying until you get the chemistry right. Right, uh, exactly. Well, for you people at home who haven't seen light field displays, it's, it's 3D without glasses. They, they diffract the light off of an object so that you can, for example, put labels on buttons on a dashboard. Yeah. That you would I'll tell you what, what I thought was really interesting, there's, and I'm, I might be mispronouncing this company, but I think it's called Demenco. 
Um, oh yeah, and, they're they're a Demenko does the uh, 3D television. Right. Um, yeah, really interesting. The televisions cost twenty five thousand dollars right now, and there's yeah. obviously only bespoke programming. But um, the the demo is flat out amazing. Yeah, and well, now that 8K displays, it required a super high res display to really do it without seeing all the dots and the pixels, right? And now that 8K displays are starting to become consumer displays, you could see this starting to move downhill economically. Like within years, we'll be able to have a, a display in the low thousands that will do um, glasses free. Well, let's, 3D let's talk for, about Looking Glass because they have released a consumer right. holographic display. Um, it was 150 for early backers. They just put a, up a Kickstarter uh, where they were trying to raise $50,000 and they raised a million and a half dollars uh, in a couple of days. So yep. I, I think this idea of a 3D display, even though today you have to kind of capture your own content with your iPhone or, or similar device, uh, yeah. it is going to be uh, increasingly something uh, that people have to have as a peripheral. Yeah, I mean, so I, I refer to watch. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I refer to this, and I know you have as well, Charlie. About like the 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 leap from black and white to color, and the leap from two D to three D wasn't enough to really change the sort of everything scope. But for me, the leap from two D to true volumetric is going to be as massively meaningful as the leap from black and white to color because yes. of the way we do things. So when you talk about like a Travis Scott concert and the idea of bringing him actually into your environment and it feels real to you, you know, now we're talking about the sort of Princess Leia effect and the HoloLens, um, the, the holodeck concept, yeah. right? Um, and that we're getting closer and closer to that, right? Today we use these clunky boxes on our face. Right. Tomorrow we'll be using glasses. And well, different you know, kinds some, of some kind of an extent, I've always sort of joked about that scene because you know, we're, we're not seeing um, Princess Leia from R2-D2's point of view, since he is the, the, supposedly the way that sequence was filmed that they view later. It was right. from a third person perspective. Correct. But, you know, with light, and I've always said, well, that's impossible. Uh, but of course, with light field, it actually is. Yeah. And now we're starting to see, you know, light field labs is still out there and they raise capital and they have shown to a small number of people what they're up to. And, you know, it requires a huge amounts of processing and graphics power. But as we know, that's a sliding scale as well, right? That just gets cheaper and better over time, especially with these new ARM chips coming from multiple manufacturers now, dedicated bespoke chips that will do these things at much lower cost. So the world's changing really fast. Yeah, you know, that, yeah. that, that's a great segue. Second to last story, Varjo keeps introducing new high-end VR headsets. And, and of right. course, they're for people who are designing automobiles and, and you know, high, things that require a tremendous amount of detail. Uh, but, you know, that they cost six, $7,000, but it is better than your eye can see. Yeah. And it's got inside out, uh, you know, substantial and high quality inside out tracking to do AR also. And, you know, right. the, I mean, again, not for the fate of harder consumers, there's, you know, monthly support fees and subscription fees. So yeah. uh, Varjo, obviously any headset manufacturer has to find some source of recurring revenue, right? You're not yeah, gonna but, make selling headsets alone. So Varjo has a model that works and um, these amazing headsets. And, and the thing that catches my attention is not what they're gonna do for high-end designers, but it, you know how these things work, right? They filter from the military down to commercial uses and then toward consumers. So you can look at the Varjo and say, my God, that's the Quest 4. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's the Quest 4. And I, you know, what we often forget is that there are so many industries using VR as a regular part of their tool set now. Like I visited, multiple automotive manufacturers, multiple factories, use cases across the board, companies like Walmart using it for training. There, there's yeah. a very large industry that has the dollars and the wherewithal to use an industrial grade product. And a company like Varjo saying like, we can deliver like literally full clarity experiences in a VR. Now, given you have to tether it, given it's required, you know, lots of graphics power, but that's- Well, and, and, of course, and, and of course a mighty PC. Right. Yeah. But, you know, you're just, you're just knowing that this is becoming 
a, a cornerstone of so many industries advancing their visual experience because things we used to do in person, we now do remotely. And now with the pandemic layered on top of it, there are more and more people exponentially doing everything remotely, right? So. Well, speaking of everything, everything remotely, again, great segue, Ted, uh, into the final story I wanted to talk about today, uh, yeah. which, which, you know, wasn't a big headline for most people, but again, for me, it suggests the uh, things to come. Uh, Rec Room is now allowing users to trade its in-game currency for goods and probably at some point for services, right. uh, you know, such as building services or avatar construction services, um, you know, which you, which you see growing up around other social platforms, right? Because for a social platform to become a metaverse, a sufficient condition is not scale, right? You need to have an economy. You need to be able to interact with people as you would in the real world with invisible seamless mediation from the platform owner. Right. And we, and we saw this with regular old computers with Second Life, right? To exactly. massive worldwide success. So of course it makes sense. You're going to see the use case of uh, you know, digital currency and digital goods and digital assets being sold, which then leads us all the way back round trip to the first thing we talked about, which is cyber, book, cyber currency and Bitcoin, right? Yeah. Bitcoin again is reaching all time highs. Um, it's one of the most volatile and profitable securities anybody can buy if you're if you're willing to take that risk. Um, I mean, you know, it's, why it's oh my God, in 2011 did I not put five thousand dollars into Bitcoin? <laughs> Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, then you could have bought the ski resort. You wouldn't have had to just go to the ski resort. <laughs> well, we mentioned the Winkleboss twins who got a nice settlement from Facebook yep. uh, just to make them go away at some point. Yeah, and uh, and they took it and invested it into Bitcoin. And, right. and now they've, they were rich yeah. to begin with. Yeah, now uh, they're fine, fine. Yeah. God, good God. Well, uh, just because we talk about tech doesn't mean we're that smart about it. Uh, <laughs> that's a good way to end this week. Uh, we didn't have a guest host, but it's always great to hang out with you, Ted, and, and hash over uh, the stories that have been uh, grabbing our attention over the past Agreed. few weeks and not always the obvious ones. Yep, and here's to a... Uh, much improved 2021 in many ways and to uh, look back and start reflecting on what did we learn from 2020 about digital goods, digital services and the virtualization of the planet, right? That well, has well, and, come and by the way, real. we've gone through a whole season together, right? Yeah. We started this experiment in um, August and we've managed to keep it up for four months. So I'm proud right. of us. And I don't think we've seen each other in person, right? This is no. as close as we get, yeah. No, but we've gotten, we've definitely gotten close and so Absolutely. it's been a pleasure to be with you. Thanks to Elliot and Brandon, our producers who record us and post us on the internets uh, in a couple of hours every Friday. So we'll see you guys next week for This Week in XR and have a great weekend.